Hey everybody, this is Shay Walker with All Garage Floors and today we're going to talk about G-Floor garage floor mats and vinyl wall-to-wall -wall flooring. More specifically, we're going to discuss some of the important facts about G-Floor you need to know about, particularly if you're comparing it to other manufacturers out there. In addition, we're going to discuss some of the issues and drawbacks that you need to be aware of before you decide to make a purchase for this type of flooring. We'll also answer some of the more common questions that arise, as well as provide the names of a couple vendors that we highly recommend for purchase. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button right there, and let's get started. Okay, so what is G-Floor? Well, G-Floor is a very durable and universal polyvinyl rollout flooring. It comes in a variety of sizes, few different colors, and five different raised surface tread designs. Now, it's called rollout flooring because it's shipped to you on a roll. Unlike some manufacturers, actually have folded their mats up when they ship them to you. So when you receive G-Floor, you just set it down on the ground, you cut off the plastic wrapper, and you roll it off. That's, it's that simple. Now, G-Floor is most well known for their garage floor parking pads and their wall-to-wall -wall garage floor installation. However, they are also very popular for use in basements, rec rooms, storage sheds, workshops, and etc. It is manufactured here in the U.S. by a company called Better Life Technologies in Emporia, Kansas. And it is made of 100% polyvinyl, otherwise known as polyvinyl chloride or PVC. Now when PVC is used for flooring, it creates a very strong yet flexible material that has a rubber-like texture to it. And this is why some people mistakenly think these are rubber floors and they're not. It's, it's actually vinyl. Now we, we do want to point out, again, the 100% polyvinyl throughout. You can see it's the same color all the way through. There are manufacturers out there that, particularly the ones that are made overseas, that tend to use fillers in the mats. And they will say uses 100% polyvinyl. And technically they're correct, but the polyvinyl they use is only one of a list of ingredients that make up that mat. And typically the only polyvinyl in it is a very thin layer that's on the top that includes the raised surface tread design. The middle can be various materials including fibrous paper and the back many times is a different color. If you see a mat with the back as a different color that's that's the first sign that it is not a hundred percent polyvinyl mat. Nitro Roll is an example of a company that uses fillers. We only bring this up because we get a lot of questions for ni about Nitro Rolls because they're cheaper than G-Floor. Um, but again, they use fillers. In fact, you can see videos of people peeling these mats apart by hand. So we wanted to point that out. G-Floor is also Floor Score certified. They are the only garage floor mat that we know of that has received this rating. That means it has passed strict indoor air quality standards. It has no VOCs or any other types of uh, solvents or fumes to leach out of the mat. In addition, it has a limited lifetime warranty for workmanship materials and defects. Again, they are the only mat that we know of that has a lifetime warranty for that. So we mentioned the uh, various colors and tread designs, and we want to point out what these are, as well as the width of the mat and such. Uh, there is sandstone, midnight black, and slate gray. And G Floor comes in four different sizes. The first one is five foot width by 10 foot long, and that's popular for golf carts, ATVs, utility vehicles, motorcycles, things like that. The next size up is one of their most popular parking pad sizes, and that is seven and a half feet wide by 17 feet long. Then they have eight and a half feet wide by 22 feet long, and 10 feet wide by 24 feet long. You can custom order longer lengths in the 10 foot width, but it is non-refundable, so that is something you need to think about if you want to order a custom length. So let's talk about how G Floor measures the thickness of their mat and we'll also go over the, uh, the different tread designs. So 
what they do is they give you a base thickness that is the thickness of the entire flat area of the mat and then an overall thickness and that overall thickness is the base thickness plus the raised surface tread design so as an example this mat here is their coin mat also referred to as large coin and it has a base thickness of 75 mils and an overall thickness of 120 mils now i know what you're thinking you're going okay great shay but what in the heck is a mill what's that in reference to you know I, who knows how thick that is right well a penny is approximately 60 mils thick so if you stack two pennies on top of each other that's going to be the approximate overall thickness of this coin mat so if you think of it in terms of pennies that gives you a much better idea there Thickest mat overall is the diamond mat here. It's also a very popular design. It has a uh, base thickness of 75 mils and an overall thickness of 130 mils. Next from there is their rib design. The rib design is a base thickness of 55 mils and an overall thickness of 110 mils. Then there's the small coin base thickness of 60 mils, overall thickness of 90 mils. And then the Levant design. Technically, it doesn't have a raised surface. So over the overall thickness and base thickness are the same at 55 mils. However, it, it does have an impregnated design in the surface of the mat. You can feel the texture. And if I hold it up to the camera, hopefully you can see it. In the black color, it looks like leather. So, there is one other option in terms of uh, color, if you want to call it that, and that is clear. You can actually get two mats in clear. One is the rib design and one is the Levant design. The Levant design kind of has a frosted glass look to it, and the uh, rib design has more of a translucent uh, clear look to it. Now, you may be wondering, okay, great, but why would you want to use a clear mat? Well, they're actually popular to use for people that have a decorative coating on their floor of some sort, or maybe a, an acid stained uh, garage floor. It's most popular for people who may have installed an epoxy flooring that may not be the best quality and they're worried about hot tire pickup and tire footprints and such. The clear mats actually let the color come up through the mat and it doesn't stand out as much as say a black mat that you may put down on the floor. So now that we know the different thicknesses and the raised tread designs and such, let's answer some of the more common questions. One of the first ones is how durable is G Floor? Well, we can tell you that G Floor is extremely durable. It's known to last for 10 years or more without peeling up, uh, cracking, or anything like that. It holds its shape very well. So G Floor is hands down the most durable garage floor mat out there. Another popular question is which surface tread design is best? Well, that really depends on how you plan to use the mat and what you find aesthetically uh, pleasing. So if you're one of those people that you like the heavy duty industrial look, then the diamond or the large coin would be the way to go. However, if you are more concerned about how smooth things are gonna roll over the floor, say uh, creepers, uh, chairs, rolling tool trays or toolboxes, then the Levant design or the small coin design is the way to go. The small coin de design here has very small gaps between all these coins, so it makes for a great rolling surface. And spoiler alert, we actually think this is the best value in the G Floor lineup. In fact, we think this is one of the best values overall of all the different garage mats out there. We wrote a separate article about it and we've included it in a link below if you want to check that out. If your goal is to collect snow melt, water dripping off the car, mud, maybe you live on a dirt driveway and you don't want all that mud collecting in your garage, then the rib design is very good. If you look closely, you can see these ribs are pretty, pretty tall and they will actually collect a lot of water and snow melt. In fact, this is one of the mats that uh, we recommend in an article that we have about containment mats. And what's great about this mat is 
These ribs go long ways with the garage, so once it fills up with stuff, you can use your broom and push it right out the door. It's excellent in that regard. Okay, another question is, do the mats lay flat or will they curl up on the edges? No, they do not curl up on the edges, and yes, they lay flat. There are a couple of reasons for this. G Floor has very few complaints about this compared to other mats on the market. And part of the reason for that is the 100% polyvinyl construction. These mats are heavy. When you get your roll, you'll, you'll be surprised how heavy they are, so they naturally want to lay flat as it is. But the primary reason that they like to lay flat is because when they are manufactured, they are stored flat in the warehouse. They are not rolled up. When you order from a vendor online, your mat is drop shipped to you direct from G Floor. The only time that it is spent rolled up on the mat is after they receive your order, they will roll it up on a hard paper core and then ship to you and that's it. So when you get it, it will lay out flat like so. Mats made overseas, that's a different story. When they're manufactured, they're rolled up like so. They sit in their manufacturing facility until they get enough to fill a container and then they get shipped overseas. They spend that time over the water. From there they go to a distribution warehouse. From there they go to the vendor and from there they sit in the warehouse in the vendor's warehouse for who knows how long until you order it. And then when you get it and you lay it out, the edges have taken a permanent set and they don't want to lay down. Mats made overseas have all kinds of complaints about not laying flat and that's one reason that G Floor gets the questions about that. So if you're buying a G Floor mat, it's going to lay flat for you. Another one is, will the mats mold or mildew? No, G Floor mats won't mold or mildew. Uh, mold and mildew don't like to attach to polyvinyl to begin with. If you don't have a moisture problem in your garage, the mats aren't going to create one, so there's nothing to worry about. However, if you have a garage floor that has an issue with moisture vapor coming up through the concrete, or maybe even the concrete actually physically getting wet, then you don't want to put a mat down because a mat's going to trap that moisture vapor and water and it's going to collect underneath and you're going to have all kinds of issues. So you need a different type of garage flooring such as interlocking uh, garage floor tiles. That would be an example right there. Do you have to glue the mats down? No. There's only a couple of cases where you may need to glue the mats down and we'll cover those here in just a moment with some installation tips. And then the other question is, is do the mats move or creep around, particularly when they're used as a parking pad? In other words, when you're pulling your car in and out, are they gonna slowly creep along on the floor? No, they will not. The rubber-like texture helps to grip the concrete. They're heavy, the weight of the car on them, they just don't move. Once you lay them down, they're gonna stay put. So let's talk about some of the problems and issues people have with G Floor. And I want to point out that this is not specific to G Floor. This is specific to all vinyl flooring and garage floor vinyl mats that are used in garages. Okay, we want to make that perfectly clear. So this isn't just G Floor. Now, the number one issue that some people even admit they wouldn't have purchased the mats if they knew about this ahead of time is that the mats will stain from car tires. Modern car tires have plasticizers and other chemicals in them that are put into the tire to make it soft and supple when it's cold and keep it from the tire sidewalls from cracking and so on. The problem with these plasticizers is that when you're out driving your car, the tire get, gets warm, you bring it in and park it on your mat and the flat part of the, the tire tread sits here. As the tire cools, these plasticizers ever so slowly leach out of the rubber and deposit onto the mat. Polyvinyl doesn't defend against this very well. Now, if you are good at cleaning these areas frequently, you won't get as big of a tire stain, but you will still get one regardless. It's not a question of whether they might stain, they will stain. So that's going to happen no matter what. If that's something that may really bother you, get a black mat, okay? Midnight black isn't really going to show the tire prints because they're a very dark brown, almost black print. 
The one trade-off though is that black tends to show the dust and things like that just like a black car does so that's something to consider. If you want a good compromise go with gray. You'll still see the tire print it's not quite as obvious but it's there but gray does a pretty good job of, of hiding the dirt and such. If tire prints really bother you whatever you do don't get sandstone because it's going to sand that stand out like a sore thumb. If the tire prints aren't going to bother you, sandstone is a great color in terms of hiding dirt and such. It's, it's even harder to see than the gray is. So that's something we want to make you aware of. Another thing that we see that comes up that people complain about is that for some reason they think that G floor is stain proof. And that's not the case. That goes for any vinyl flooring. It's not stain proof. It's highly stain resistant and it will resist uh, automotive fluids, gas solvents, uh, brake fluid, even battery acid. But if you let it sit on the mat for a long enough time, particularly battery acid, it's going to discolor the mat. It's not going to physically damage the mat, but it will discolor the mat. So that's something else that we want to point out. The next thing we want you to be aware of is a more of a characteristic of polyvinyl that tends to cause problems in wall-to-wall -wall coverage. And that is that polyvinyl will expand and contract with changes in temperature. So if you're doing a wall-to-wall -wall coverage of G-Floor, it's very important that you pay attention to their instructions on how to do it properly. And we're going to get into that right now, how to connect the mats together and do such an installation. So, if you are going to connect just two mats together, say you're making a big parking pad in your garage, then G-Floor recommends that you use their 4-inch wide G-Floor seam tape. It's waterproof, so water can't get between the seam and onto the concrete below. And it's only sticky on one side. So that's the side that's going to join the two mats together. The reason it's not sticky on the other side is you don't want to create a surface where it's permanently adhered right down the center of your floor there because as it expands and contracts, it may cause some wrinkling around that seam. So it's only sticky on the one side and it allows it to move back and forth. Now when you're doing a wall-to-wall -wall coverage like this, it's extremely important that you leave a half-inch gap from all walls and immovable objects. And by immovable objects, we mean things like a, a support pole in your garage, or maybe heavy cabinets that you're not gonna move, or stairs leading uh, into the house, whatever it may be. If you don't provide that half inch gap, then what happens is, is, is the, uh, the mats begin to expand, there's no room for them to go, and they're gonna buckle like this or they will wrinkle and do all kinds of strange things. So it's important that you have that half inch gap. Now G Floor says if you're going to connect more than two mats together, then don't use the seam tape. Instead, use their center trim strip. Their center trim strip is a decorative strip that, that covers up the actual seam. And it has a one and a half inch pocket on either side for you to slide the floor into. This way you can leave a half inch gap from the center with both mats and it will allow the mats to expand and contract like that. So when you're hooking up three or more mats together, you want to use that center trim strip. Now we did mention that there are some times that you may want to glue down the mat. One of those is if you don't want to deal with expansion and contraction at all. Then G Floor does make a glue that you can put down on the entire floor and lay the mats down on that and it creates a permanent installation. You don't need to use a center trim strip or anything like that. You can butt join them right together. The other time you need to use glue is if you were going to butt joint three or more mats together. If that's the case, say you have a very large room that you're doing, then you need to glue the entire mat down or you're going to have problems with them buckling and wrinkling. Okay, so now we do have a 
couple of retailers that we recommend where you can purchase G Floor. Now this is a part of the video where we need to tell you that All Garage Floors is a member of various affiliate programs and if you make a purchase through one of our links uh, here or on our site uh, we may make a small commission. It doesn't affect the price at all of, of what you, you pay for the product but we need to point that out to you. Now the first retailer that we recommend if price is extremely important to you is to check out Amazon. We have a link below and Amazon has a complete store that is dedicated to G Floor and all the products they carry. So that's a good place to check. Just keep in mind that if you order from Amazon there's no one there to answer your questions before or after you receive the flooring. So that's something that's important to consider. Our favorite place is Garage Flooring LLC out of Colorado. The owner there has been selling G Floor for well over 15 years now. He's even installed it in his one of his own garages and he has all kinds of experience with the various questions, installation issues, and other problems people try to solve when they order G Floor, particularly and most most importantly for the wall-to-wall -wall installations. In addition, their customer service is excellent. Uh, of all the different vendors we recommend, I don't think anyone has better customer service than they do. In addition, they also offer very competitive pricing. So, in closing here, we recommend that you check out the links below for purchase, as well as reading the articles that, that we have there in G Floor. If you have any questions, you can ask them here, but instead we highly recommend that you go to our website. Go to the G Floor article. You can scroll down. We have a comment section there. We monitor it daily. We are very well known for answering our readers' questions about all types of garage flooring products as well as helping them solve different problems or issues they may encounter. So don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.